this is the ultimate elimination diet, which is what you want to do because you definitely want to eliminate some food from the standard American diet. Originally, this diet seemed bizarre to me because it goes against everything you hear as a kid because you always hear to eat your vegetables to grow up big and strong. You see Popeye, you hear that you should have a rainbow on your plate for optimum health, except maybe there's a reason why we don't intrinsically crave Brussels sprouts except we intrinsically crave meat. Maybe our body is a complex mechanism that knows what is good for us. I honestly feel like the proof is in the pudding. If you look at some of the advocates of an animal-based or carnivore diet, they look like they're in optimum health. They look like they're honestly radiant, like they're Adonis. And then if you compare that to some of the advocates of a vegan diet, they look like they're diminished. They look like they're in honestly poor health. And I think that's an honest signal that's hard to fake. And that was really the hook that lured me into trying an animal-based and a carnivore diet 10 months ago and I haven't looked back since. The reason that an animal-based diet is so good for cognition is that it eliminates things that are bad for cognition. Things like seed oils, pesticide exposure and nutrient deficiencies, preservatives, artificial sweeteners, high amounts of sugar and derivatives, anti-nutrients found in plants and dietary sensitivities, as well as I am not the nutrition god. I know a bit except I'm still learning as well. So the carnivore diet introduces meat in different forms. So beef primarily, beef is bovine and lamb is ovine. Basically you want to aim for ruminant animals, which is four-legged animals that roam around because that's supposed to mimic what our ancestors ate. And it makes sense. Ruminant animals give you higher feelings of satiety compared to something like chicken. Chicken is often called the lettuce of the carnivore world because it tastes good, except it's just not filling. Ground beef is cheaper and more filling than steak. Aim for higher fat content in the ground beef. Fat is good. Saturated fats even more so especially from animal sources if you think about it your brain is 60% fat you cut out fat you cut out your ability to think <laughs> organ meats similar to the idea of glandular therapy in that like heals like if you have issues with your liver you would consume beef liver because it's going to have a lot of bioavailable nutrients that will help promote the health of your liver and even so if you look at cerebral lysin that's purified pig brains that we take to improve the ability of our brain so it makes sense and it's a pretty common concept. Organs as a whole are some of the most nutrient dense compounds on the planet in that they contain vitamin B12, vitamin K2, creatine, vitamin A, and there's a lot of essential compounds for our health that is only found in animal foods, not found in vegetables or plants or anything like that. So it's more evidence that it is a proper way for us to eat. The classic organ triad is liver, kidney, and heart. Best to cook it, except you can't stomach it like myself. It's good to take the desiccated dehydrated powder, either in capsules or just in the raw powder by itself. Eggs, fish, and dairy, these are all good for cognition and other facets of health. Eggs provide a source of choline, which is a precursor to acetylcholine, which is important for memory, focus, and physical movements. Fish is a source of DHA and EPA, which is good for neurotransmitter modulation and cognitive health as a whole. Aim for low mercury fish like baza or salmon and avoid tuna regularly because it contains high levels of mercury because it's more of a predatory fish. Dairy can be a great source of carbohydrates except avoid it if you're sensitive. If you are sensitive you might want to try a2 dairy or goat milk because it contains less lactose so it can be easier tolerated. Pork and chicken are still good and we'll touch on them in a future video. It eliminates seed oils. Like if you think about it, what makes food processed? You know, sweeteners, preservatives, and processed seed oils in that it's not good for your health and that should be common sense by just looking at it. And if you want to do some homework, look at how seed oils are made and tell me that is healthy for your body. You know, it's bizarre how much processing that it goes through just to be even quote unquote edible. And the biggest reason why it's bad for your body is because it's very pro-inflammatory because it gives you excess amount of compounds that your body does need except in small amounts, not in the large amounts. So usually you would get these compounds like stearic acid, oleric acid, omega-6, omega-3, and like a small amount, which is good for your body. Regularly consume seed oils which is in absolutely everything so it's kind of tough to get away from you're consuming this amount and it's very pro-inflammatory causing an excess increase of oxidative stress leading to mitochondrial dysfunction increasing your risk of a lot of chronic diseases and particularly cognitive diseases like adhd like alzheimer's like dementia and there's been scientists that have made the link 
of excess seed oil consumption to those neurodegenerative disorders and disorders as a whole. Avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil are fine as they are less processed. Anti-nutrients, animals can run away, plants, cats, they have to develop their own defensive strategy to avoid being eaten because no species wants to be eaten. What they do is they develop chemicals and plants are nature's great chemists. And even if you look at caffeine, caffeine is a plant's natural pesticide in that they produce it and then bugs that would consume it would get strokes or seizures and just die because of its adenosine antagonism. And that was its primary function, except turns out for humans provides a mild cognitive boost. And if you think about it, 95% of plants are poisonous and even some that are edible are only edible under certain conditions. And Dr. Anthony Chaffee always talks about his university lecture. We learned 20 years ago that Brussels sprouts alone had over 136 identified human carcinogens in them. Most vegetables that we commonly consume contain carcinogens. Plants certainly have nutrients, except they also have anti-nutrients, which outweighs the positive. Gluten, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, and sugar. A lot of people have insensitivities or intolerances to some of these chemicals knowingly or unknowingly. So it can be good to do an elimination diet for this. And a lot of these compounds can be anti-cognitive. Even look at something like fluoride in like toothpaste, for instance. That's a neurotoxin, yet it's in our tap water. And that's just one example, except there's also preservatives that have been linked to increases in hyperactivity. There's artificial sweeteners that have been linked as carcinogens. There's a lot of correlations and links between them, as well as there's no carcinogens in meat. Only time that there would be carcinogens in meat is when you add it to them, whether that's in preservatives or seed oils or sweeteners or different chemicals. If you think about it, we've been eating beef and and meet the majority of humankind. You know, even a lot of hunter-gatherer tribes, they primarily eat meat, they're primarily animal-based, and they're very much a time capsule into the past. Sugar is fine to get from fruit because there's enzymes in it that help you digest it so it doesn't spike your blood sugar compared to regular table sugar. Gluten sensitivities or even intolerances are fairly common. If so, and you still want to consume it, you could aim for sourdough which has less ingredients, more fermentation, and less gluten. Carbs, keto or no keto? That is the question, isn't it? That is the big debate in the carnivore world, whether you should be completely carnivore or you should be animal-based and still get carbs through dairy, through fruit, through some other approved sources. It's one of those things where it just depends on the person. A lot of dietary changes are very person-specific in that some people will be able to thrive on an animal-based diet and other people will be able to thrive on a carnivore based diet or even a mix of both. Ketogenic diet is great for cognitions even been trialed with Alzheimer's disease to great effects. It's great for its cancer fighting effects except as a whole after trying keto for three four months it was good. My cognition was sharp except I was just always in a stressed out state and I lived that way for months until I incorporated carbs back into my diet and then I could finally relax because carbs signal abundance. Carbs will naturally suppress the HPA axis and it'll increase serotonin, increasing contentness and lowering stress. The best carbohydrates in my opinion are fruit, basmati rice, white potatoes, just peel the skin, and dairy and honey. This is more animal based compared to pure carnivore and I feel like that's important because we have to escape dogmatism when we talk about diet. Because oftentimes in life, things aren't black, things aren't white, they're gray, and that they're mixed. Usually things aren't completely bad or things aren't completely good. It's usually a ratio or a fraction or a gradient of the two. And this is very true when it comes to diet. And I hate the philosophy that you just don't like someone because the way that they eat, their dietary preference, because there's so many different factors involved. Different things work for different people. And just because someone has a different dietary preference, it doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mean they're immoral. It doesn't mean they're bad. That being said, I still believe an animal-based diet is the way to go, except 
It can include other compounds, except I feel like the base of the house has to be an animal-based diet. It has to be meat in some capacity because it just mimics what we've ate for eons. Ovid Dives of Truth lies in the middle of the polarized extremes, and that is what you can do in diet and that you can incorporate things from both sides and see how you feel. I would recommend an animal-based diet and cut out vegetables. And that is also a massive change and I would encourage you to investigate it a bit further. Let me know if you like this video and you want me to talk more about a carnivore diet because I'll make other videos relating to it. Another compound that is very good for cognition and is a powerful antioxidant is NAC and acetylcysteine. I've done a few videos on NAC and one of the most recent I did was about NAC's effects for almost every facet of mental health which is insane. So check that video out. <laughs>